life is good. All right. So uh, I'm here with my boy Shaq. Shaq, thank you very much for being on this with me today. Got some really cool things I wanted to talk about, obviously. The world's kind of going through a rough week. Right, we can kind of both agree on that shit. But um, on some real shit, got a few shout outs before we get started with any of this. Got a few shout outs. Uh, Jared Krause, Jada Garcia, Jake O'Neill from the 303. Uh, I love them. I just love them more than anything. Jake and Jada. Mackenzie Thompson, Adriana, also from the 303. Uh, Mackenzie's actually stationed down in San Antonio right now. I left for the Navy with her, went to high school with her. Uh, she's always showing me support and love on all my content. Zach Sullivan, Tyler Proctor, uh, Mandy Delgado, Haley Farley, and Darbs. Uh, if you're listening to this, I actually had Haley and Darbs on the last podcast, some of these last few podcasts I've been talking about. And, sorry, I just got a few more. I got Megan Kuhn, Shaley Pryor, and Emily Shusinski, all from back home. I uh, just got, like I said, if you have taken the time to log into where we're at right now, if you're listening, I fucking love you guys. And that's on some real shit. I got the dollar story to tell you real quick. Okay, tell me it's a dollar. You take a dollar out of your pocket. Okay, how much is it worth? A dollar. One dollar. You crinkle it up. You put it in your pocket. You put it in the dryer. You stomp on it. You bury it in the dirt. And you pull it back out. How much is it worth? A dollar. So no matter what anybody else puts you through, no matter how hard anybody beats you down, you're still worth a dollar. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. Love it. Love it. All right, like I said, I got my boy Shaq here with me today. Uh, I actually met Shaq last week. He just hopped into the podcast when I was sitting over here on this uh, east side balcony here in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, obviously, it's Sunday. It is May 31st. Tomorrow, we start our sixth month of 2020. Jeez. That's crazy. Thanks for having me. Shaq. I seen you last course. week. I was like, I respect what you're doing, bro. I really right. do respect it. Like, you're the only one on base right now doing this. You're standing out. You're being yourself. You're doing what, you, you're doing what makes... You're doing what makes you happy. So that's all I respect. I respect, I respect your grind. I respect what you're doing, for real, for real. Thank you, Shaq. So, Shaq, uh, where you, where you, uh, what's your rate? Me, I'm an ABE. And uh, what, what does an ABE do? An ABE is the aviation boat's wing equipment. We, like, we recover and we, we, launch, we launch the aircraft off the flight deck. Okay. So like, we, like, we work on the catapults and the resting gear. So the catapults, we actually send the jets off and the resting gear when they come back in you know, that, uh, that long rope. Yep. They yep. catch the jets, that's the, yeah, that's the resting gear. Yep. I want to do catapults, though. I don't want to do a wrestling gear. So where, where are they sending you next, do you know? I'm going back to Virginia. I'm going back to Virginia. And when do you leave? I leave June 6th. My itinerary says June 6th. Hopefully, you know, we get up yeah, out of we'll here. we'll get out of here. <laughs> Hopefully, we get up I'll, out I'll of here. I'll be out of here the 10th, four days after that. Yes, sir. So when did, you, when did you leave for boot camp? I left for boot camp January 22nd. That's crazy. I left a week earlier. For real? January 15th. I left Colorado. Where are you from? Me? I'm originally from New York. Harlem, New York. But I grew up in Virginia Beach. Virginia. Okay. So... When, when did you move? When did you? I moved to Virginia like um, my sixth grade year. Okay. Can I ask why? Because my, you know how the gang activity and stuff. You know my mom ain't want me around that because she, like, she see me outside every day doing right. block and stuff. You know, she, like she already seen the route I was headed, so she wanted to take me out of that environment. Come on, like I'm the youngest out of all of us. Uh-huh. But I look up, you know, all the siblings and stuff. Yes. So she ain't want me around that no more. So Shaq, you left everything that you had at home to come join the military and better yourself and your family. Yeah, I had to. Yes. I hope I hope you all fucking heard that. He left everything that he had back home to better himself and to better his family. Like, the reason why I'm in the military, part of the reason is for my mom. My mom had passed my junior year of high school, May 20th, 2018. And mind you, my birthday, May 11th. And she passed nine days after my birthday. I was a junior in high school, just turned 17. And uh, she passed. She uh, They said heart failure or heart disease. I was 17 years old. Day after that, um... My dad could have stayed with us, but he you know he um he left and stuff like that. Cause I wanted to, I wanted to like become a man and stuff, mm-hmm. so I wanted to do it on my own. So she's part of the reason why I joined the military, for real, for real. Cause it wasn't like nothing in VA for me out there. You feel me? I met I met Shaq a week ago. I would never would have guessed by the way you perceive yourself that something like that would have happened to you. What in your everyday life? What helps you? What makes you wake up in the morning, continuing and wanting to do better? I just hate seeing my family struggle, you feel me? Yes. You know, like, everybody caught a story and stuff like that. Like, you know, I didn't want to be out there, like, like, like doing bad stuff. But, you know, people had to get money some way, somehow. You feel me? But, like, what keep me going is my dad. Like, you know, he older in age. I just want to see him do good. I want, like, you know, I just want everything to, like, just everything to be good. And, like, I don't want to let nobody be, like, miserable or anything. Because I feel like he missed me so much. I just can't wait to see him. You feel me? Yes. 
That's all it is. Because uh, don't forget, we were supposed to see our families the day we graduated boot camp. Unfortunately, the world is going through a virus epidemic right now. Unfortunately, we have not. I have not. Yeah, I haven't seen. I haven't seen my family since the day I left. I don't miss them. And kind of with you, man, like by the time I was 19 years old, I, I lived with an unbelievable amount of regret and disappointment. Mm-hmm. Right. I hope you all heard that. By the time I was 19 years old, I lived in an immense amount of regret and disappointment in myself mm-hmm. and like the way I perceived people and treated people in my life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, when I joined the military, each day that I hated life, going through boot camp day in, day out. What's up, boy? Like, same thing, man. Like, I just wanted to change, like, how I perceived life and change who I was and who I was becoming. You heard that? Same thing he said for me. He wanted to better himself. Simple. That's all it is. No reason to want to do great in life. And you're going to do great in life. I can see it, bro. I can tell by the way your grind is, bro. I can tell by the way you're doing. You work hard. Every Sunday, you gonna do on a podcast. Yes. Like, I know, like, okay, be honest. Like, some days you don't feel like doing bo- like podcasts. Is it some days you don't feel so, like doing it? Like, what's really hard is like, <laughs> so I've really like I don't lecture about like the entrepreneurial side of what I do. Mm-hmm. But like, obviously, I kind of get into the entrepreneurial, trying to create like a brand or a name for myself. Mm-hmm. That is a like the crazy thing about the internet now like the kind of opportunities of growing a business like it's never been as easy Mm -hmm. but it's still a fucking grind that's why 99 percent of entrepreneurs fail like Mm -hmm. it's just a thing because the grind is the realest thing and it's unbelievably demonizing like it's not necessarily demonizing but like it's hard putting out content literally 14 to 60 times a day like and I think the biggest thing is is most motivational speakers or people who try to motivate positivity and success in life have come from a story. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what I overcame, and it's just something, like, so in awe that everyone, like, listens to them because there's something so special. However, like, I get that I've been, like, I've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you've been through even worse. And that's the thing is everybody that you're looking around right now, somebody has been through something. Mm-hmm. And what I try to preach is the idea that no matter what you go through in life, as a human being, it is unbelievably special to come out of the womb alive and have the opportunity to make change and make opportunities for yourself and your family. Yet people will continue to make an excuse and continue to dwell on things that happen in their life mm-hmm. instead of standing up and making change. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And so, like, I'm not trying to teach anybody lessons because let me tell you, I have not figured it out. Mm-hmm. I, I do not brag about my salary. Do not brag about the clout that I have on social media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't, I don't take time out of my day to, to like that. to to show everybody else how great I am, especially mm-hmm. when I'm not. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't try to teach. I just try to push people to do their best because I'm trying to push myself to do the best. Especially also because we live. I hate to talk about our generation. We hear enough about our generation. But I believe we live in a world that is unbelievably pessimistic. Mm-hmm. So pessimistic, if you don't know the definition, it's uh, like looking at things in the wrong way, yeah. right? The opposite mm-hmm. of optimistic, we're looking at everything in the good way. So like, especially fucking Twitter, like I can't, I, <laughs> I do post on Twitter, but I can't stand going through the timeline because everybody has something to say about everything. Yeah. People do this, people are like that, and people just gen, like, everybody almost generalizes like society as one whole piece when there's literally so many different creations so many different things that have shaped people and and i just like i hate it like if you want to make fucking change go make fucking change it's like it is unbelievable the kind of if you were to put in like time for a month if you were to put in hours just for a month like the unbelievable kind of change you can make for your people and for your family Mm -hmm. is unbelievable eight weeks we spent a boot camp and it changed me more than 19 years of my life you know what i'm saying most definitely most definitely but like you know like like i always took granted for what i had but like in boot camp you know like you're not going to the next yes you had to like like make stuff do that really played a big part of my mind you know like at home you run the stuff you can go to the store anytime you want to yes well, you know, and next, you know, like the next over there, you can't go anytime you want to go on their time. 
so they're like this one made me think like you know start taking care like like use like a little bit try to like spread everything out to make sure like it, like it benefit me longer like long on in the like in the long run and it, it kind of also no i love what you said also kind of the idea that like always having like i didn't realize how much my family was there until they were like gone yeah. like i was not able to mm -hmm. get in contact with my family mm -hmm. and like that hurts so i make sure you know like now i always make sure that i'm contacting my family letting mm -hmm. them know what's up because you know i also had a lot of time to think about the cool things that i was allowed to do as a child mm -hmm. for example my grandfather i'm from colorado obviously midwest that's mm -hmm. what i love to do if you haven't checked out the old youtube videos i made mm -hmm. now i made i made a couple cool ones but uh, i had some I just genuinely had experiences in the mountains that completely changed my life as a person. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather, he was the one that introduced me to this entire world of nature and like the things that it has to offer. And so when I was in boot camp, I thought about the times when I was nine years old and we got to spend six days fishing and he'd cook for me. And like, I just, like I had nothing else to worry about in the world. And like now that it's over and at that time I wish I had just I grabbed it and took every second in mm -hmm. understanding that this may never happen again mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because now he's he's at like his fifth knee surgery and he can't do the things that he was once able to do mm -hmm. and so to see that it breaks my heart you know so like that's one thing I want to do for my kids and my grandkids you know one day is do that for them you know introduce that that life to them too so yeah what made you want to join the military what made me want to join the military yeah and after that the navy specifically all right so actually i'll start with the navy first mm -hmm. my great uncle and his father were in the navy mm -hmm. so my great uncle his father did his 20. he's actually an officer we're talking we're talking like world war ii he for was real? in right like some real shit and uh like, I, I'm going to go kind of back off to what we were saying. By the time I was 19, mm -hmm. I lived, like, just, I was unbelievably disappointed with who I looked at in the mirror, right? Because when I was 18, I'll tell you a story, kind of the shit that I was getting into. I was at a friend's house. I, he's not really a friend. Like, he was just someone that I knew back in the day. And we were sitting on his couch, and we're messing around. I was, I was 17 at the time. I remember sitting there on the bed, my eyes were closed. Next thing I remember is my ears ringing. And I opened my eyes, the, the room is filled with powder, and like a black smoke. The motherfucker released the gun, the gun went off. Went into the mattress we were sitting on and out the back wall. When you talk about literally less than 12 inches away from death, like, like that happened, like those were the, people I was with so when I started like leaving the house and my mom would be like you know where, where were you for three days you know I told her don't worry about it like I was that kid I was also the kid stealing money I was also the kid stealing alcohol from my parents um, you know cabinet like I just unbelievably took for granted that I felt like the world was against me somehow mm -hmm. when I really lost the sense of how grateful I was to be human so I was dating this girl, the last straw came, you know, she was she was messing with her ex at the time, and so I found out, moved out of the house, I don't know who I was living with at the time. Parents gave me a place to stay when I came back, so unbelievably grateful for that. Um, so that's when I hit rock bottom. Friend Matt East, if you're listening, Matt East called me, he said, I want you to join the Navy, he said, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, so I figured, Man, why, like, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I take that time to do that? So I, I dropped everything. I went to the Navy recruiting office. At the time, I'd just gotten uh, charged with a shoplifting ticket down on 16th Street Mall, and which is Denver. is like the street of Denver. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I went in November, they said I had to wait until all that was cleared up. Mm -hmm. I had to delay my process six months before I could actually, like, you know, like, go in for my medical and everything. So it wasn't until May. So finally, finally, I got all that stuff done. I actually was supposed to be on unsupervised probation for a whole year. But I actually got it down to six months because I told them that I was enlisting. And so once I got off of that, I signed. I went in in May, May 14th. 
got my medical done. I had to wait till June 14th to sign. I actually signed. I was going to sign as a nuke. Got declined because I failed calculus three my senior year in high school. We won't talk about that. But, uh, but yeah, I just I, I genuinely let myself go really, really bad at such a young age. Mm-hmm. Like I also got denied from like one of my you know, my dream school to go to and like I was not like I, I don't know, man. Like I was so unwilling to take on the the challenges of life when I was so young, and it wasn't until I started getting older that when I I learned that taking these challenges head on, especially right there in boot camp, night one, you're standing there at attention. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. Like, it's a really? realist thing if you've ever gone through it. Um, Man. And so I joined because I wanted to, I honestly wanted to better myself and give myself an opportunity <laughs> to live a wonderful life and make something of myself. Same, vice versa, same. So, like, I, so. I know you gave a little bit why you joined the military. Go, go deep, man. So, okay, I finished my senior year off. You know, it's me in the house, myself, me and my brother, and, like, some of his friends in the house with his girl or whatnot. So, you know, all through the years, I mean, all that senior year, I'm in the house. I graduate. So, June 6th, to be honest, like, it's about to come up. It's about to be a whole year anniversary. I went to my fa- my first Navy recruiter office, June 6, 2019, and I talked to a recruiter. So, I wanted to join the military. I said, I was like, was out here for me. And then the way the long show, I was supposed to be a long show like my grandparents do. I was supposed to be a long show but the union that slowed down, right? So I was like, why not join the military? Because my dad put it in my head. If you would ask me this last year, like two, like two years ago, my dad said join the military, join the, armed service, join the armed services. I said, dad, I'm not going to no military. <laughs> but a year later, I considered it. Told him my first recruiter. Yes. Told him my first recruiter, okay. To my ass back, I passed it. I swore in September. Uh, September 26, 2019, and then you about to be like this about to get you right now. So I'm living in my house, right? Mind you, I just turned 18, so the bills come in my brother's name. My brother lost my mom's house, so my brother actually made me homeless. My own brother left me, left me for his like he left his own little brother, blood little brother for his girl. He he made me he made his own little brother homeless. So what if I wasn't going to the military? What would I have been doing now? I'd have been out there lost in the world. But thank God, I'm grateful that I swore in already. I already had my ship date and everything. So that's like, that's part of the reason why I'm kind of saying that the military was meant for me. Cause certain objects that happened in my life. Like the military always, because I love working out. You know, always the military do, all they do is work it out. And uh, I had anger problems growing up. So boot camp and military like will structure me to like, like get out of that street mentality and try to like, you know, like calm down mm-hmm. and be working on my anger issues and stuff. Like, you know, it's like some people here, like like dickheads here and shit. And I'm working on it, you know, like people like say yes. something to certain people, it get me mad. Cause I don't like, I don't like people bullying us, the next person. I hate bullies, so yes. it get me mad. So I'll talk to them, yes. like bro, relax. And then that's when they apologize to him. Cause I don't like people bullying people. So people ask me all the time mm-hmm. why I like doing these podcasts. Mm-hmm. You just gave me a perfect example of why, what? like, Bro, like, what people don't understand is, like, the beautiful idea that people are created through some of the work, like, through things that, like, Mm -hmm. what what you just told me, what you went through, I never, I just, like, I would never have seen you like that. You know, when I see you walking on the sidewalk, I don't see you like that. Mm -hmm. And to learn about that story out of you and, like, to understand that everybody here has gone through things that have changed them as a person, Mm -hmm. like... I love getting that out of people mm-hmm. because it's it's the realest thing that we live through. Mm-hmm. Going through the shit that you do is the realest thing that anybody will go through. It's about you right now, who you have become, and rising above it and changing it for the better. Yes, sir. And like that's what I want to drive into people. It's not about where you are. If you're going through shit, if you're going through shit, <laughs> it's all about what are you going to do to overcome it make yeah. yourself happy mm-hmm. because we will never get yesterday back blessing in disguise it's the biggest blessing in disguise like i'm very guilty of this that's some real shit i'm say. very guilty of this i had a problem when i was younger about dwelling on things that happened in the past in the same way bro same way yes same exact way same. and i think the blessing of it is the fact that it did happen in the past mm-hmm and now I have an opportunity to change myself for the better. It's facts. And make an impact on the people that I love. It's facts. Facts. It's facts, bro. God. 
crazy that you ah, said that, bro. I fuck it. Oh, keep going, bro, please. It's crazy that you said that, bro. Because, like, like, do you ever just, like, sit back and think to yourself about all the things that happened to you in the past? It, like, does it get you a little angry sometimes? All the time. Yeah, it's just like, like, I just can't forget stuff. Yes. But I'm working on my mind to, like, to, like to stop breaking them old stuff. Or, like, whatever happened in the past is the past. Like, you know, to stop doing it. You feel me? Like, because I, I don't want to be a mad person. Just like I've been mad all my life because all the things I've been through and stuff, I didn't know how to take it out. Right. Because like all the anger is built inside of me. I never went like, talking to nobody. Like, see here, you see me walking around. I, I see you. Yes. Biggest smile on my face. Like, what's up, bro? All that. Like, you would have never thought because my mom, my parents always told me because I, I, I didn't want to bring you down. Feel me? Like, I talk about like my sad stuff, like, stuff that happened to me. I want to bring you down. Cause I see you in a good mood. I'm being in a good mood with you. Simple. Cause I care about your feelings more than I care about my feelings. I don't want to bring you down and have you sad with me, thinking right. about and worry about me. I make sure you good too. That's exactly what I walk around here like that. And that's like that is what humanity should be all about. It's picking each other up instead of bringing. That's kind of. I wanted to relate that on like the pessimistic idea of society. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just, just to throw this out there. Twitter's usage over the last three years has declined by like nearly twenty one percent. You True. will not see Twitter in eight years. Count me on this. Remember, May 31st, I'm saying this. You will not see Twitter in eight years. The reason why Twitter does not work is because it's everybody else's opinion that goes on to things like this. It is not about what you're doing and how you're doing it. It's not like it doesn't relate to a life circumstance. Mm -hmm. And genuinely, it's the most pessimistic app out there. Like, it's just, it's a, it's a, it fucking sucks as an app. Like, it, it, I've never seen any app, there's no other app that competes nearly to how pessimistic Twitter is. Because it's just, un it, it's unbelievably, like, depressing and demeaning. Like I said, people use the word, like, people. People do this, people do that, and they genuinize an entire group of people without putting a picture or context into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But someone who has a little bit of clout can say something and immediately control a mass amount of people mm -hmm. without putting any context into a situation. And over time, people have started to understand that. Mm -hmm. You wanna know one thing, bro? Yes. That I admire about you, bro? It's like, you sit right here doing a podcast. People walk, people will be walking, right? People walking, people staring. People could, people could laugh. People could do anything they want, but like, why is he doing a podcast? Should I be all in your business? The fact that you don't care, cause that you know you're doing this, cause you want to do it. You don't you, like this thing doesn't affect you. Like people being negative, cause like people walking by, like smiling at you, stuff like that, or like like trying to laugh at you. Like why is he doing podcasts? Like I respect that, bro. Cause like you know this is what makes you happy. So you're not gonna let nobody, let, no, let nobody emotions, feelings drag you down with them. Cause right now you're still smiling. People yeah. still staring. I don't know what's going on in their head. I don't know if they were just hating on you, but to be honest, bro. I respect the ground, bro. I respect the ground. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually really cool. Like I said, something that has kind of driven me to do this is like on a real note. Like I get people that swipe up, you mm -hmm. know, swipe up on Snapchat or like DM me on Instagram or Facebook. And, like tell me that they actually watch this. Oh, mm -hmm. I showed my stepfather this. Oh, my my friend's aunt is now watching your podcast. The way that people perceive and spread positivity for the ideas that I have, I think is really cool. That's why I love it. Like on a real note, I started like, I started doing like young entrepreneurial things when I was 18. I took like a business class. Mm -hmm. So I was highly motivated. Dropped an immense amount of cash on Facebook and Instagram ads because that was the 2018, 2019 thing. Mm -hmm. Still is an unbelievably underpriced ad system to an unbelievable amount of people and how like descriptive and um, like defined you can make your audience. It's unbelievable. It's mm -hmm. actually unbelievable. So if you ever get into it, that's the way to go. But um, like I spent money on that and a website and a domain. I got 2000 people going through my website. Not one person bought a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I was selling watches, like I, the problem was these gold chains. What's hard about it is when you just have a picture online and you don't have everything that somebody wants, they're really hard to sell. One, because people love, like for example, I have a 20 inch Fiagro gold cut chain, mm -hmm. right? 
that's worth $220 for a 6 gram necklace. Well, I wanted a 20 inch. I don't have a 20 inch. I wanted a 4 millimeter instead of a 5. Mm-hmm. Well, so like that's something you can't change. Maybe that has something else to do with it. But when it came to watches, I didn't spend $1 on any sort of advertisement. I went up to people and I said, hey, here's a watch. Would you be interested? And that shit works. That shit works. That was a young entrepreneur like side I got to work on. But uh, the cool thing was, is like not only did people support what I was doing, mm-hmm. people supported me because like the impact that I made on around other people. Like I worked at Top Golf, right? And like I, I earned an unbelievable amount of respect for people who worked at Top Golf. I, I met Jada. I met my best friends Jake and Jada. I met at Top Golf. Mm-hmm. And like they really got me out of a deep place in life. And like people just genuinely respected because of how hard I worked. You know, it's just a real thing. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you do make an impact on people because like what I feel like, I feel like people who might walk around here, the same thing I said to you, bro, people might be thinking the same thing. Like, like dang, like, cause like you're standing out. Cause like, bro, we're the only ones out here with headphones and a microphone on. Yes. Nobody has thought about it on, but everybody just want to go around, you know, just like, just chill and relax and stuff. But you're still putting in work, not even in class on the weekends. You are still trying to better yourself on the weekends while people are out here just playing, walking around, just chilling. You know why I work? You know why I put in work? Why? Because we will be 65 one day. Mm-hmm. Pray that I'll be 65 one day, right? Yes, sir. I said this a little bit ago in one of my pieces of content. But 65 to 70 percent of people, mm-hmm. ages 18 through 55, are genuinely unhappy with where they're at in life. I know you're saying that because they live with an immense amount of regret. Mm-hmm. It's the realest thing. Um, yeah, and I don't want to live with that. I don't want to live with regret. See what you? I see exactly what you're doing. I think about the same thing. Like people live in the moment. Yes. You are thinking about your future, right? All the time. That's all I think about. That's Simple. literally all I think about. Cause like, you're trying to build yourself up for you, so you, so make sure that you're straight in the future, right? Yes. See, same. See, and you you said about entrepreneurship. I thought to myself, cause that's why that's why that's why I'm an ABE, I'm a mechanic. When I get out, I'm gonna have on my own mechanical business, be a real estate investor. I study all that at like school. They ain't really about investing, but I actually studied about investing, like real estate, all that about taxes, all that credit. Hey, hold on, I gotta say hi to my boy, Noel. Wanting to better himself for the future, he left everything that he had in home in Washington Hell yeah. to better himself in his future. How crazy is that? I don't even regret it either, man. No, I mean, 100%. I, I've, met, I've met so many cool people here. Um, yeah, every, every day I walk out of my barracks, I see somebody new and, you know, <clears> I, I try to say like, I try and say hi to at least one new person a day. That's, that's, I don't know, that's what I try and do to challenge myself and, um, it's just cool the different types of people all different walks of life and that's what i said in boot camp too like it was hard getting used to a bunch of different people that um that i've never even dealt with you know trying to solve problems with people who solve problems differently and it's a challenge and i think that's that's one of the greatest things about the military is you get all these different people and different ways to solve different things and it just makes i guess it makes the world go round i guess <laughs> Like that's so people, cool. Some people think like the military, you know, you go to the military or you sold your soul or, or you go into war, you go to the military. No, the military, it really <laughs> benefits, it like, it really benefits, like, you can get benefits from the military. Uh-huh. See how I met you? Sure. If yes. I would have never joined the military, I probably would have never met you. See, I just met you. <laughs> I would have I I I I I continued talking smack about the other 49 states. Yeah. Like, probably. Yes, yep. awesome. <laughs> on a real note. Colorado 303, that's where it's at. But <laughs> on a real note. Let me ask you, do you live with, like, do you live with like regrets and disappointments in your life? You know, there's always things that I, I regret. Um, I guess not not every not everybody is is perfect, but I, I like to think that the choices that I've made and the decisions that I've made have led me here, and for that yes. I'm grateful. Yes, absolutely. We are actually talking about how like like the past is a blessing in disguise, like the blessing that we have to just continue to make change and like the the fact that we have an opportunity to make impact on the people around us and it's not about where you're at it's not about what you were it's all about where you're going and i think that that's that's exactly where i'm gonna like i'm gonna that's gonna be the title not about where you were where you're at it's about where you're going period
God, and people wonder why I love doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> on a real note, like I, I knew Noel because we went to boot camp together, and uh, like here we are, like we're living life. Like yeah. on a real note, we left everything we had to better ourselves, better our family, better our future. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm grateful that the this is the path that I chose because right now I got I got a roof over my head, I got food in my stomach, and Honestly, I know there's a lot of people that are out there living worse, but you know, if, if you're ever struggling, you're listening to this. Just join the freaking military. I mean, it is cool. There's so many different paths you can go. I mean, everyone. Okay, so a little insight on my job is, I joined the Navy. I will probably be on a carrier maybe once or twice in my entire life, just because of the rate, a different path that I chose. And I mean, I'm I'm happy with it. I joined the Navy. I was like, okay. I don't want to be on the carrier. I joined the wrong branch because <laughs> they're probably going to throw me on a carrier destroyer, just something. But no, with my with my rate, it is it's amazing because I'll be flying around in big big ass aircrafts, and you, that's an Air Force thing. I mean, what are you doing? But no, they got different different jobs for everybody in the military. So period. It's 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 something. Any last comments you want to make to the people listening? I I don't know. I, I really I really don't right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, on but, a real note, no well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Very man. much like. I talk about this is why I do the podcast is because people from all around who have different stories, who like chose, you know, who are continuing to choose to make decisions to better themselves. And like, this is just all a prime example of what it's all like. Yeah. I have one question though. Where, where can I find this podcast at? You can find this podcast <laughs> on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and iHeartRadio. Okay. At Inner Peace Motivation, Cole James Smith. Okay. Um, you follow me on Instagram? Um, Do I don't you follow know. me on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Instagram, Cole.Smith. Uh, Twitter, Cole underscore Smith. TikTok, Smith underscore J underscore Cole. Oh, uh, Facebook, Cole James Smith. <laughs> on a real note, make sure that you're always following those because I'm always having content posted out. But yes, on Instagram, I, oh, I will always have that out. And you can find it on there. All right. Sound good? Right on, brother. Uh, all right, right on. Let's hit intermission. All right, so we're back. I have my friend Cardona here with me at the table. And uh, we. Uh, one thing I kind of <laughs> wanted to leave off to into, the, into now was how strong the human mind is, right? If you tell yourself that you can do it, you will do it. If you tell yourself that you cannot do it, you won't do it. You will not do it if you tell yourself you cannot do it. Here's what I don't understand. People go through major depression episodes. People will go through the craziest shit in life, and they will tell you, ah, no, I can't go out and run for 10 minutes each day. Ah, uh, I'm not going to be able to graduate. Ah, uh, give up some bullshit-ass excuses. Because they literally convince themselves that they cannot do it. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes sense. I don't get it, man. Just I think as humans in general, I think we value people's opinions about ourselves mm -hmm. extremely more than we value our own body and our own mind and our own soul. We are willing to make our decisions based on somebody mm -hmm. else's thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. Than what we believe no one else understands our vision no one understands our story that's the biggest thing no one understands our vision like if you want it why would you let somebody else who doesn't understand tell you that you're that you can't do it you know what I'm saying and especially the way social media has become an epi like a majority part of life it's true yeah, like it's true. Uh, it's, uh, it's on a real note like on a real note like, people say that they're not, they don't ingest other people's opinions, yet they post every opinion or self-doubt that they have onto their social media platform. Exactly. Drowning for attention. Exactly, yes. That also goes the other way, that, like, people are willing to post, like, exclusive information or exclusive pictures of themselves to thrive in that attention. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that has goes hand in hand with like happiness and fulfillment. Hey, some people, I just want to. I like playing both sides of the argument. Sometimes okay. some yes. people 
are still do that and they're still happy they're still mentally stable and they're okay are with they? that are they some are some are some are other people are exactly what you described yeah. and it is about mental happiness it's about finding that happiness and that balance in your mind and it's always about keeping the peace if you could do that and you can look in the mirror and be okay with yourself at the end of the day and be a good human being i wouldn't say there's anything wrong with it but if you're mentally depressed it i think the biggest thing about depression that i think we overlook is depression is not like it is not a how do i explain it it is not a characteristic that is ingested with your genes mm -hmm. it is more of an episode that someone goes through it's a sickness it is not a human trait so when they talk about like statistics on depression it's 10% of people will go through a major depression episode each year, which is actually substantially lower than I thought. Only 10%, and if it, you go to teens, it's about one in eight, right? So like, I think that's the, that's the coolest thing that me and Shaq have been kind of talking about all day, is it's only an episode. Whether you're going through it, understand that if you really put your mind to it and you find healthy lifestyle habits, and you continue to seek the positive institutions in life, then it, it like coming out of depression is the realest thing. And that's what shapes people and that's what forms people and people go through it. Yet, it's about who you come out to be is the coolest thing to me. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Is it's not the money that will make you happy. Like, it, it's the funniest thing. You see it all the time. Oh, money will make me happy. Okay. Does it really? Because at the end of the day, does money, does having no money make you sad? Like, right now, <coughs> kind of like I was talking about Shaq earlier, I, like, I ain't bragging about my salary. I ain't bragging about the kind of money I have. But, like, I am genuinely fucking ecstatic about where I am in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you hear about these major pop stars who turn on themselves, go through major depressive episodes with drugs and substances involved, even though they are rich and famous. Like, everybody would kill to be... Ah, ah fuck. I hate that. I hate that I do that. Not everyone. But there are, there are people, people yeah, right, people. that would kill to have money and fame. And uh, I don't know, bro. I just... I think this biggest thing... It's a tough need. position to, to be in. very tough position. You know, yeah. you're out there and you're in the spotlight. A lot of your work is trying to please other people and figure out what other people want. And if you're the type to want to see better in the world and you focus on the negatives, it'll bring you down in the darkness. It'll put you in that, that bad place. You know, you need uh, a protective ozone around yourself of confidence and knowing what you want and knowing when you've taken it too far and just really working on on yourself is this something that you guys struggle with is like finding what you want like knowing what you want in the future and does that like set back your your feelings in life is that if that makes sense i i know what you're saying to me something i want i think about is my my future being occupationally and not just occupationally, I think about who I'm going to have my relationships with, being friends, maybe a romantic relationship, as I go down life, as I travel further into my life. And that's really what I figured out are the two most important things to me, is how I'm going to handle the relationships around me and how I'm going to work occupationally. It's part of the reason I'm here right now. So let me ask, what do you want to do? What What is your job that you want in the future? My job? Like, is there a certain job that you want? Um, I'm really, I like to see myself as a jack of all trades. Like, I'm capable of numerous amounts of things. But specifically, realistically, I've been striving to be an electrician. Okay. So, ATO. ATO. So let me, let me ask you this. What steps do you take every day to reach that goal? job search. I was job searching every day before I got myself here. Uh, I was looking for the right company and at times, you know, when I first started, I had it really good. I didn't realize how good I had it 
I wasn't making the amount of money that I wanted to make, and sometimes the jobs are really shitty. Yes. I look back on those days, and they were really good times. And I moved on to the next job, and the next job, sometimes I had bosses that didn't like me, sometimes I had bosses that I didn't like. And it's the amount of times you try, it's the amount of times you put yourself out there, and if you keep working towards a goal, you will most likely get there. So what does the daily process work? Like, what does your daily process look like to reach that goal? Here? Now? Right now, I'm on a, uh, what would you call it? I'm, like, not really thinking. I'm just going. So I'm here. I joined the Navy. Everything's set up to where I need it to be. I get up in the morning, and I make my bed, make sure my room's clean, and I go to class, and I strive to do the best I can in class. Because what's your ultimate goal going to class every day? Becoming an electrician. Graduating. Graduating. Becoming an electrician. You heard it here. It is that simple that I want people just like us to understand is the goal that you have. Because with me, very much so, I want to I want to be a commercial pilot, right? Yes. So what does my daily process look like? Okay, I wake up in the morning and I shave and I clean, right? And I go to class each and every day because when I go to class enough times, at some point I will graduate, Right? Yeah. So that's when I start with the Navy. I get sent to my ultimate duty station. I have not reached that yet. What does every day look like? I'm putting in work. I'm becoming the best that I can be. Learning as much as I absolutely can in all fields of aviation. Right? Just, you're right. Taking it one day at a time. Because at one point in our lives, we will have the chance to either re-enlist or fall out. And if I choose to fall out... That's the time there that I will go, hey, I will have some tuition assistance to go to flight school, which will help me pay for that, right? And I can get started on a real dream that I have. That's why I joined the military. That's what my daily process looks That's like. That's true. You know and what I mean? But back to what I said about me not thinking, and part of that was, was I thought a lot before coming here into the Navy. I thought about my future. I don't have to think as much about like I don't have to plan for my future as much because the day I joined the Navy my future has been somewhat engraved so now as I tackle each day I get closer and closer to that future that I want without having to as much plan for it as I needed to before I joined the Navy if you're out there in the civilian world you got to work with your money better and you have to have other plans and you have to tackle other things you know the Navy is a great place to get started if you want a trade you want to learn to trade so Shaq let me ask you what what do you what do you look for like what do you want to do what what are you striving for in life to be honest not doing no cliche stuff striving to be successful like I don't want to like what does that look what does that look like to you my my, what does it look like to me just like I don't want to be no no millionaire no billionaire no everybody want to be like a millionaire and stuff I just want to be in this like in a specific place specific place that something was to go wrong, like my car break down, I can fix it, and my account still looks good. Yes, that is great. I just want to be financially stable. Mm-hmm. Put it like that. I'm financially stable. Like something was to happen, a funeral or something, I could pay for it. I still have enough money to fall back on. I won't like my, my account won't go negative. I don't got to spend all my money. Like mm-hmm. just basically just being like take care of my business and still you know living and stuff like that. You feel me? Living within your means. Yes. Something I strive for as well. Yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. So what is what is your daily process look like? Tell me the steps that you're gonna take to get there. Me, what I currently do. You know, I wake up in the morning, brush my teeth, work out, my like keep my body in shape because you know we can't we can't PT for classes and stuff. So keep my body in shape. Then I I study investing. So I want to be a real estate investor because being your own boss in this world. It's the ultimate goal right now because with 100%. school, t- I feel like school teaches you to go to college, didn't work for somebody. School only teaches you about investing. So with me, you know, I had a good grade honor roll every report card, but I didn't really like school like that because it didn't teach you to like the most important thing about life. It like school teaches you to work for somebody. I don't work for somebody for the rest of my life. I want to be my own boss. That's the ultimate goal, to be my own boss. What bothers me about the school system is we live in a world where the internet fucking controls how we live and what we live yet we're still worried about memorizing the fucking quadratic formula negative what is it <laughs> plus like, or I, minus I, b I, something like, some bullshit <laughs> no, no 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 it's the square 
Yeah. Square root, yeah. Fuck, is it it's negative plus B or plus minus or minus 4AC all over 2A? Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. Anyways, we are too worried about memorizing formulas when we have the information at our fingertips. Like the fact that we still sit in a classroom for seven hours and listen to someone teach for the last hundred years. Yet yeah, our world has turned into something evolutionary and technolo so technologically advanced that we have information at our fingertips that I can get in literally less than two seconds blows my fucking mind. Point proven. That's all Point I have to proven. Say. I mean, look at all these people getting information from us right now. Yeah. At this podcast. I just want to make it known he was, uh, what was your name again? Shaq. Shaq. He's talking about investing, you know. For anybody that's listening that's in the military right now, you've already invested in yourself. And anybody who like works towards their goals is investing in themselves. It's about being conscious of what you can do. And I always tell people to be as smart as they can with their money. Just like Shaq said, he wants to be able to, if his car breaks down, he's going to be able to fix it and still be afloat. His boat's not going under. It's not going to sink. I like that. That's Investing what, in yourself. That's what everybody should strive for. I love for. that shit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to knock. I'm not going to knock school because school is like PYF. Pay yourself first. Ever heard of that? Yes. PYF. Pay yourself first. We learned that in class. Like, that's one thing I took from school. Pay yourself first. Like, you get paid, put money aside, you know, put in your savings. That's one thing I, I can't say about school with talking to me to do. Pay myself first. Yeah, I think what Schmidt said over here, I don't think he said that school wasn't important because education is important. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. That's why we're making this podcast. It's for education. It's the way we've been educating ourselves. It's I been think, the same for a very long time. I think the coolest thing about where we are today is I can go get on I can go take a business class for four I'm sorry yes yes I'm right take a business class for four years at university but I can also take a four week course on photography I can also look on YouTube how to play the guitar I can also look on YouTube and read LinkedIn articles by some of the top professors that are being updated daily instead of taking two months to process and print out a new book. I can learn 18 more things. Now with the, like the idea of having information at my fingertips, I can learn 18 times the amount of information within half of the time than things were before. Does that make sense? And I think that's the coolest thing about the internet in general. That gives us, it like, it really gives people an opportunity to, like, find a way to be successful with what they want to do with themselves. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, like, I don't know, man, like. Well, find your happiness. You know, fight that depression. Find what you want. Find what you want to be and, and emulate that. When you're truly happy, I realized not too long ago is that money does not matter when you are truly happy you are perfectly content with your life you know for some people maybe a little bit of money is what makes them happy but you look at it, it's not always money isn't what everybody should be searching for to be happy and when you find your happiness that's what you want to try to live and if your environment isn't providing that for you you got to try to change your environment you got to place yourself in another environment and I figured that out on my journey of life by going to different jobs by coming to the Navy I found out that when your environment isn't providing the happiness that you need you need to go find the environment that has all those flowing streams you're looking for if I'm gonna go off of this if you are 16 to 20 if you are 16 to 24 and your parents still pay your bills and you still complain about how your parents treat you you need to look really deep in yourself and fucking fix yourself. Because the biggest thing about life is understanding how to learn independently. And I think that is a true step to finding fulfillment and happiness on life. Quit depending on other people, whether it's money, opinions, or aspirations. And learn how to be independent from each other. And quit letting other people's opinions drown your own voice out. Like I said, if you are 16 to 24 and your parents still pay your bills and behind their back you t still talk smack about them, you really need to fix yourself. Really, on a real note, it's not about where you are as of today. 
if you are disappointed in the person that you look at in the mirror, it's time to start making change today and quit dwelling on things that have happened in the past and start working towards a better future. I think it's that simple. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, we're talking about <laughs> life, talking about happiness, talking about people that may be depressed, talking about getting your life in order. You got anything to add? Uh, get close be to, happy, get close, the, get close to my phone. Just be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Just Bob Marley, uh, like Bob Marley yeah. said. <laughs> you know treat others how you would like to be treated. That's hey, that's you, very sorry, true. Say that one more time. Treat others how you would like to be treated. Craziest thing about life. It is unbelievable if you show people respect, the kind of respect that you will get back. Exactly. And I treat people how you do want to be treated. That's yeah. that's so true, and I think that's a really big thing going on right now. And you, you gotta you gotta think about that because sometimes you get happiness out of making other people happy, right? Or making right. things work smoother 100%. in your environment. One hundred percent. Right? Yes. Yes, one hundred percent. I love like getting the worst out of people so they can strive to be their best. You go out there and you you emulate that and you get everybody on board. This world would be the craziest place of happiness. Tell them, always put your best foot forward. You know what I'm saying? Always give your 100%. Put your best yeah. foot forward. Your best foot forward. Best foot forward. Man, like, look, I haven't figured it out, right? I don't know the cheat codes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. I'm just, I'm in this with all you guys. We are on a run of life. We're playing it each and every day. And we're going to battle through each obstacle that comes in our way. And I'm going to take it head on. I'm going to quit making excuses. I'm not going to let these challenges override me. I'm not going to live with regrets. And not necessarily regrets of what you did. Maybe it's living with regrets of things that you didn't do. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And continuing to promote positivity and happiness and kindness and strength in every aspect of life. And I promise I will be somewhere. I promise myself I'll be somewhere. Yeah. Biggest thing. Investing in myself. I fucking love that, dude. I'm so glad he had to say that. You you draw people in with your energy. You really do. You you draw so much positive energy if you can emulate I keep saying emulate that positive energy. Like right now, we're over here doing this podcast, doing the most positive thing we can. And now we're making a little crowd over here. There's Hell people yeah. coming around. They're listening to us. People staring from behind the the glass <laughs> over here. <laughs> the glass walls. People are trying to figure out what's going on. Shaq. So you, come in and come you got, listen. You got anything to say, man? I don't know. Like, got me thinking, too. Yeah, got me thinking. Got me thinking, man. Like, like, that's all I'm saying. It's facts, though. It's facts. It, we just take all that in. And like, I learned some new stuff. Like, cause like, I learn new stuff every day. I like learning new stuff. And y'all, y'all just taught me some stuff. Like, you know, just try to be happy and stuff. Like, no matter what you go through, just still be happy. That's one thing I'm trying to work on, too. Like, stop doing them in the past. And then you said earlier. be Get happy. yourself out there. Just do it. Sir. Just do it. You want to do something, do it. You know what? Lately, I'm going I'm to come in on myself. been telling myself every day I'm going to exercise every single day. Have you? No. Not Man. once. All right, so now you just fucking <laughs> not once. No, on a real note. On a real note, that's the first. That's the first step. That's the first no, step. No once. Changing. It's been like a month since I actually I went out and I I hit the oak horse, but like I'm not gonna count that one time as me like really being dedicated to the process. I've been dedicated to my schoolwork, you know, getting yes. things done on time. But you you find that balance. Just a, a month ago, I was outside playing basketball every day. Right. I was doing push-ups. I was going on runs. You know, this heat, the Florida heat's got got me somewhere. I, I feel like the sun's go, trying to murder me every I day. I always go but. 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, you find your time. You find your timing. Just, Just do, do, it. It. do it. Yes. That was tight. Did you hear that? that Did you hear the echo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like I said, if you've taken the time to log into Enterprise Motivation with Cole James Smith, remember... Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, fucking everywhere. I'm always looking for feedback. I'm always posting questions, motivational content. It is an unbelievable blessing to be human. You have 18 times more life. You are 18 more life. Fuck. 
18 times you more are likely. 18 times more likely to die each day than to live once. So, on a real note, just like, like we were talking about, give your 120% each and every day. Learn to respect the grind, respect the game of life. It is unbelievable the kind of presence that life will give to you on your birthday. I say birthday, I'm like, I don't know why I said birthday, but on a real note, like, the every kind of... Every day is your birthday. Yeah, every morning you wake up, every morning you wake up. I just thought about that. I just thought about that. I'm going to get up with you. I'm going to hop on there next time. All right, all right. But like I said, you logged in this far. Uh, Inner Peace Motivation with Cole James Smith. Love to have you. Always look for feedback. I love you guys. On a real note, I fucking love you guys. Everyone who's been on here, um, anyone who's just listened and tuned in and given to me some feedback, always... You know, giving me something to work on and tell me what I should focus on and the stories that I get to listen to. It's incredible. It's incredible the kind of people that I've met. Schmitt's so got until, it hooked up. Until, uh, I just want to say something real quick. Yes, Shaq, please do. Sir. I just need to say. say. Shout out to my mom, my dad. Mom, I love you, my whole family. But then, you know, I leave this Saturday. So it's probably my last one doing with you. I just want to say thank you for having me on last week. Thank you for bringing me back this Sunday. I really do appreciate it, bro. Nice for to real. meet you, Shaq. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice to meet you too, bro. Nice to meet you, bro. For real. I really do appreciate y'all. No y'all, y'all spoke some real Damn. stuff to me. They got on me a, thinking. For real, for real. On a real note, man, like, it'd be sad to watch my boys leave. Y'all my shipmates, man. Like, I've known Shaq for a week and a half. <laughs> and the kind of impact, like, the things that he's talked to me about just... Fuck, man, they just hit you heart in the heart, something else, man. And like, all I'm doing is thinking, thinking about how I'm gonna be better this week. All right? Damn. Shaq, fuck, dude. Love you, man. Love you too, bro. Man. But yeah. You guys, any, anything else? Any last minute? Just thank you for having us, bro. That's it. Thank you. All right, man. Good note to wrap it up on. Logging out.